The 2009 Samoa earthquake and tsunami took place on 29 September 2009 in the southern Pacific Ocean adjacent to the Kermadec Tonga subduction zone. The submarine earthquake occurred in an extensional environment and had a moment magnitude of 8.1 and a maximum Mercalli intensity of V strong. It was the largest earthquake of 2009. A tsunami was generated which caused substantial damage and loss of life in Samoa, American Samoa, and Tonga. The Pacific Tsunami Warning Center recorded a 3-inch rise in sea levels near the epicenter, and New Zealand scientists determined that the waves measured 14 metres 46 feet at their highest on the Samoan coast. The quake occurred on the outer rise of the Kermadec Tonga subduction zone. This is part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, where tectonic plates in the Earth's lithosphere meet and earthquakes and volcanic activity are common. Countries affected by the tsunami in the areas that were hit are American Samoa, Samoa and Tonga where more than 189 people were killed, especially children, most of them in Samoa. Large waves with no major damage were reported on the coasts of Fiji, the northern coast of New Zealand and Rarotonga in the Cook Islands. People took precautions in the low-lying atolls of Tokelau and moved to higher ground. Niue was reported as reasonably safe because it is high. There were no reports of high waves from Vanuatu, Kiribati, New Caledonia and the Solomon Islands. American Samoa The Los Angeles Times, quoting a source at the National Park of American Samoa, reported that, four tsunami waves, 15 to 20 feet 4.5 to 6 meters high, and reaching up to a mile 1.6 kilometers inland, hit American Samoa shortly after the earthquake. The water flowed inland about 100 yards 100 meters before receding, leaving some cars stuck in the mud. Damage to the National Park's natural reserves and the destruction of its visitor center and main offices have been reported, while only 20% of the park's 40 to 50 employees and volunteers had been found. A beach village was reported to have been wiped out killing at least 14 people after the earthquake had sent residents fleeing for higher ground. Large numbers of American Samoans were said to have been left injured or homeless. Confirmed death tolls rose to 22 people, with many people still missing in the villages of Leone and Pago Pago. A Radio New Zealand International correspondent reported that the centre of Pago Pago, the largest city in American Samoa, had sustained heavy damage in the tsunami, with its main street flooded, cars overturned, and shoreline businesses damaged. He also witnessed looting in one of the stores. American Samoa Governor Togiola Tulafono was in Honolulu, Hawaii for an ocean policy conference at the time of the tsunami struck. Tulafono was monitoring events in American Samoa, but was having difficulties reaching the territory because of communications failures. He told reporters that because of the tight-knit communities and strong family bonds, I don't think anybody is going to be spared this disaster. Tulafono departed Hawaii for American Samoa on a United States Coast Guard supply flight from Honolulu on the evening of 29 September. Lieutenant Governor Ipolasi Itofal Sunia announced that the earthquake had caused severe damage to American Samoa's electrical infrastructure. The main electricity generator in Satala had been damaged, which knocked out power from the central village of Fagalu across Tutuila to the eastern village of Wunnoa. 
The Satala electrical plant may be out of service for a month or more until repairs can be made, with the American Samoa Power Authority ASPA stating that power will be out indefinitely. A new power plant at Satala is expected to be commissioned on May 25, 2017. Electricity was also out on the islands of Ofu Olosega, in the Manwa Islands Group, and a government plane has been sent to assess damage on Ofu. The water system was also damaged in the earthquake, and the supply of fresh water to eastern parts of American Samoa has been disrupted due to broken water lines. The Water Division of the American Samoa Power Authority ASPA announced that it will bring water in tanker trucks to affected villages. Residents were warned to conserve and boil water until safe drinking water supplies can be restored, which could take some time, U.S. President Barack Obama declared a major disaster for its dependent territory, American Samoa, allowing federal funds to be used for rescues, life support, and public health and safety measures. Among the initial U.S. government response is a Federal Emergency Management Agency FEMA logistics team and staff from the Department of Health and Human Services HHS, Coast Guard, Federal Aviation Administration, and Department of Defense. Also, basic needs and basic commodities, including electrical generators, medical supplies, and pharmaceutical drugs were sent out, and multiple planes are being prepared for more cargo and personnel, including FEMA, HHS, and Coast Guard staff and experts from the Environmental Protection Agency, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and Red Cross. The USS Ingram FFG-61 was en route to American Samoa and was the first U.S. military asset to arrive and assist in the recovery efforts. <laughs> Samoa Samoa evacuated people from the entire city of Apia, the country's capital city on the island of Upolu and moving thousands of residents to higher ground. Journalist Cherell Jackson reported that the city quickly emptied in the aftermath of the earthquake and tsunami. All the schools, workplaces everyone has walked up, it's like a ghost town. Twenty villages on Upolu South Side were reportedly destroyed, including Lepa, the home of Samoa's Prime Minister Tuilafa Lupsali I Salele Malalegawi. In Lepa, only the church and the village's welcome sign remained standing following the tsunami. The hardest hit areas in Samoa appear to be Fagaloa Bay on the east coast of Upolu, Lalamanu on the southeast coast, and along the rest of the southern coast of the island, with one hospital in Apia reporting it had received 79 bodies. The village of Putasi on the southwest coast of Upolu was reported with extensive damage in a TVNZ news item, along with its neighboring villages of Satalo and Salani being completely wiped out. A mother at the Taufua Beach Fails in Lalamanu watched her three young children swept away by the tsunami. Elsewhere there were reports of landslides near Solasolo and damage to plantations near Apia. A number of tourist resorts are located on Upolu's south coast. These include Coconuts Beach Resort and Sinalay Reef Resort and Spa in the village of Siamu. Both resorts published tsunami updates on their websites. The Samoana Resort is in the village of Salamumu. The eastern part of the island remains without power or water supplies after the earthquake. A Red Cross worker reported to Radio New Zealand that waves 10 feet 3 meters high had flattened beachside resorts on Upolu, and that residents told him the tourist zone of Lalamanu had been crushed by a wall of water about 20 to 30 feet 6.1 to 9.1 meters high. The cliffs above Lalamanu were scoured out to a height of 10 to 15 meters, 33 to 49 feet. Power outages were reported and phone lines were jammed. 
Samoan officials confirmed the runway at Faliolo International Airport on Upolu was safe by early afternoon, the 30th of September 2009. Samoan Prime Minister Tuilafa Ayano Salele Malalegawi, and his Deputy Prime Minister Misa Telefoni Retzliff were in Auckland, New Zealand, at the time of the earthquake. Both political leaders immediately returned to Samoa. Prime Minister Malalegawi lost two relatives in the tsunami, including the daughter of one of his nieces. The Prime Minister made his first address to the nation, after the tsunami, on 1 October. The government of Samoa estimates the damage at $147.25 million. On 2 October 2009, an estimated 3,000 people were homeless and seeking refuge in shelters set up around the worst affected villages. New Zealand's Minister of Foreign Affairs Murray McCulley visited Apia to co ordinate New Zealand's emergency relief effort. New Zealand Prime Minister John Key arrived in Samoa on 3 October and visited some of the most damaged areas on Upolu including the villages of Putasi and Lalolamu. The Samoa government and the people of Samoa held a national funeral at Apia Park for tsunami victims on 8 October 2009 Samoa local time. Tonga The main impact in Tonga was in the northern part of the island kingdom where there were deaths, injuries and extensive damage on Niuatoputapu, a flat coral island 500 km north of the main island Tongatapu, and reportedly closest to the epicenter of the earthquake. The death toll on the island has risen to nine. A Tongan government spokesman Alfred Sokai said 90% of homes had been destroyed as well as serious damage to the hospital. An advisor to the Prime Minister, Lopeti Senatuli, later said the amount of damage to buildings has been downgraded to 60%. There are three main villages on Niuatoputapu, Hahifo and Falahau which were hit by three waves, some six meters high, and the village of Vipoa, which received less damage. A new school building remained standing and provided some shelter. The island is isolated with a population of around 1,000 people. Approximately 192 families were left homeless and the homes of 143 additional families were damaged in the tsunami in the villages of Hahifo, Falahau and Vipoa. 289 families lived in residences which escaped damage in the disaster. Other reports outlined coastal damage from a 13-foot wave on the islands. Other media had earlier reported 10 people killed in Tonga. Three people are missing and four sustained serious injuries. Earlier, a government plane sent to the island could not land due to tsunami damage at Niuatoputapu Airport, which had been forced to close. Tonga's acting Prime Minister Lord Tuita said the government is sending a second plane to Niuatoputapu, but that communication links have been damaged. The government appealed for clothing and bedding donations for residents in Niuatoputapu. Relief efforts undertaken by the Tongan government and Red Cross focused on Niuatoputapu, with support from Australia, New Zealand, and France. A United Nations coordinator was scheduled to travel to Tonga to support early recovery initiatives in areas such as health, sanitation, water, infrastructure, psychological support, agriculture, and fishing. There were no reports of any damage to Vava U Island Group or to the main island of Tongatapu, where the capital, Nuku'alofa, is. French Polynesia French Polynesia escaped much of the damage inflicted against other Polynesian countries and territories by the earthquake. 
Concern centered on the Marquesas Islands, the northernmost archipelago in French Polynesia. Unlike the other islands of French Polynesia, the Marquesas have no protective coral reefs which would absorb the impact of a potential tsunami. French High Commissioner Adolphe Colrath warned residents of the Marquesas to seek shelter at an elevation of at least 10 meters (33 feet) above sea level. Residents across French Polynesia were advised to avoid valleys and bays, tie up watercraft and listen to Rizzo France Outre Mer RFO for further instruction. In the Marquesas Islands, some bays were nearly emptied of their water before a wave crashed back in and refilled the area. Boats in the region immediately left port once the warning was issued. The cargo and passenger ship Aranui 3, which had been docked in Taiohai Bay on Nuku Haiva in the Marquesas, the area most impacted by a small tsunami wave, immediately evacuated the bay for open water. Outside of the Marquesas, the threat of a tsunami largely passed without much incidence. The government had initially feared a wave of approximately 90 cm with the ability to strike all parts of the sprawling territory. Five small tsunami waves, measuring 25 to 70 cm were recorded off the coast of Papeete, Tahiti, between 11.10 am and 12 noon local time on Tuesday. The first tsunami wave at 11.10 a.m. measured 25 centimeters 10 in, while the second recorded wave was measured at 35 centimeters 14 in. At 11.23 a.m. the waves gradually increased in size, with the fifth, and last wave, being recorded at 70 centimeters 28 in, tall at 12.03 p.m. The Colombian Navy training ship Gloria, also left Papeete Harbor in Tahiti once the warning was issued as a precaution. Residents of the Society Islands, which include the tourist resort areas of Tahiti and Moria, were advised to move above 5 meters (16 feet) above sea level for safety. High Commissioner Adolf Kolrath canceled the tsunami red alert at 12:03 p.m. on Tuesday for all areas of French Polynesia except the Marquesas. The alert for the Marquesas Islands was extended 2:50 p.m. until the threat had passed. French Polynesian President Oscar Temaru wrote to the heads of American Samoa, Samoa and Tonga offering support following the tsunami. On behalf of the people and the government of French Polynesia, I would like to convey our most sincere expression of condolence and solidarity in the wake of the tsunami that just hit your people. We have, within the Franz framework decided to send both human and material help, one doctor, two nurses and one logistics expert, all members of our emergency medical staff will carry a total of 600 kgs sick of medical material that will be dispatched locally by the Franz authorities. Franz stands for France, Australia and New Zealand, three large countries who traditionally provide aid in Oceania following natural disasters. The Guardian reported 189 deaths, 149 in Samoa, 31 American Samoa, 9 Tonga, the 2nd of October 2009. Topic: Tsunami Memorial Following the first anniversary of February 2011 Earthquake Memorial in Christchurch, a memorial dedicated to the tsunami victims was erected in the village of Leone American Samoa on 25 February 2012. Leone a small village on a bay was particularly hard hit. The monument is called the Healing Garden. International aid Topic Governments New Zealand dispatched RNZAF P three Orions to assess the damage and search for bodies. 
an RNZAF C-130 Hercules with medical staff and supplies, makeshift morgues, stretchers, tents and food was sent on the 30th. A further seven RNZAF and two Royal Australian Air Force Hercules flights were made, and RAAF C-17 Globemaster also provided airlift support to ferry relief supplies. These were distributed within the islands by RNZAF Bell UH-1H helicopters. Air New Zealand arranged for larger Boeing 777 aircraft to carry in relief workers and evacuate tourists to Auckland, and fly the Samoan Prime Minister back to his country. The New Zealand helicopter carrying ship HMNZS Canterbury was sent to Samoa also offloading aid and personnel in Tonga. The New Zealand government also pledged over $12 million for relief efforts. The United States sent the U.S. Navy frigate USS Ingram, two U.S. Air Force C 17 Globemaster III aircraft from the 154th Wing, and 90 members of the Hawaii National Guard to American Samoa to assist in the relief efforts there. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Army Geospatial Center, prepared an emergency webpage for geological, hydrological and trafficability information for relief engineering and humanitarian aid. Australia sent teams of paramedics, doctors, nurses and search and rescue specialists with essential supplies like tents and medicine. Other aid came from concerned individuals and groups throughout the world, namely New Zealand, Australia, the United States and Canada. Topic: <laughs> Aid agencies. The European Commission has announced it is setting up a scheme for a humanitarian fund with an initial amount of €150,000. The fund will be channeled to the International Red Cross through the Disaster Response Emergency Fund DREF, to assist with primary emergency needs in Samoa depending upon the first on the ground assessments. Oxfam International is ready to respond to the disaster with staff and supplies on standby. Oxfam's New Zealand branch has launched a fund for donations. Samoa and American Samoa have local Red Cross offices. New Zealand Red Cross humanitarian aid workers are also on standby to travel to Samoa, and has started a fund for donations. The Red Cross is building 76 10-foot by 20-foot single-room homes and 23 20-foot by 20-foot multi-room homes in Nuiataputapu to replace homes destroyed there by the tsunami. Aid funds are also being organized by the Rotary Club of NZ and ANZ Bank. The United States said federal aid would be made available to combat the devastation. Craig Fugate, head of the Federal Emergency Management Agency, said FEMA sent an incident management assistance team and a planning and response team to provide support and on-the-ground assessment, in along with assistance from the U.S. Coast Guard. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints organized humanitarian aid from members of the church in the USA, New Zealand, Samoa and Tonga to be delivered to those in need. On Tonga's main island of Tongatapu, 12 LDS stake presidents asked church members on the radio to donate food, clothing, cooking equipment, pillows, blankets and other necessities, and LDS church buildings in American Samoa housed the displaced victims of the disaster. The Next of Kin Registry was a vital resource used for family reunification post the tsunami, according to the Deputy Director of the Territorial Emergency Management Coordinating Office Temco. ADRA Adventist Development and Relief Agency has deployed a coordinator on the ground in Samoa to provide emergency management support to the response efforts. 
Mr. Eager has taken initial aid with him, and by Friday 2 October had visited the devastated areas on the south coast of Upolu. He is coordinating ADRA's response with the Samoan Disaster Management Council and other responding agencies to compile findings and plan coordinated relief. ADRA has launched a Pacific Disaster Appeal in both Australia and New Zealand. Topic. Emergency relief funds for donations The New Zealand Red Cross appeal raised donations amounting to almost $3.5 million. Oxfam New Zealand set up a rapid response emergency fund at their website. UNICEF NZ ADRA Australia has set up a Pacific Disasters Appeal Donation website, and hotline 1-800-242-372. ADRA New Zealand has a donation website and call centre 0800-4-999-111. Tsunami warnings A tsunami warning was initially issued for American Samoa, Samoa, Niue, Wallace and Futuna, Tokelau, the Cook Islands, Tonga, Tuvalu, Kiribati, the Kermadec Islands, Fiji, Baker Island, Howland Island, Jarvis Island, New Zealand, French Polynesia, Palmyra Island, Vanuatu, Nauru, Marshall Islands, and Solomon Islands. Most of the warnings were called off once it was clear that the tsunami threat had passed. Officials in the Cook Islands, which hosted the 2009 Pacific Mini Games, noted that the tsunami passed without any damage to the country. A tsunami warning remained in effect for the Marquesas Islands of French Polynesia, as five main waves were expected to strike that archipelago. Warnings also remained in Tuvalu, one of the lowest lying countries in the world. Local radio stations in Tonga broadcast warnings that a tsunami was possible and that people should move away from coastal villages. A tsunami watch was issued for islands farther from the epicenter, including Hawaii and Papua New Guinea, but not for California, USA. Officials were determining whether the tsunami could reach Hawaii, the center said. It was possible that a strongly decreased wave could reach Hawaii. A tsunami advisory was issued for coastal California and the San Francisco Bay Area beginning at 9 p.m. local time as a precaution. Topic: <laughs> Aftershocks. There were more than 40 total aftershocks with a magnitude greater than 5.0 in the 48 hours after the main shock. Shocks with magnitude 6.0 or higher are highlighted in light blue. Topic: See also List of earthquakes in 2009 List of earthquakes in Samoa